Climate change legislation has been the topic this week in both Barcelona and Washington, where U.S. and European leaders were attempting a meeting of the minds before a big U.N. summit in Copenhagen next month. All of us agreed uh, that it was imperative for us to redouble our efforts in the weeks between now and the Copenhagen meetings to assure that we create a framework for progress uh, in dealing with uh, what is a potential uh, uh, ecologic uh, disaster. This is Dispatch. I'm Marla Dial. It's the divide between wealthy and developing countries that's dogged the international conferences leading up to Copenhagen and hopes that the summit will produce a binding treaty on carbon emission goals have died a quiet death. The Obama administration says instead that it will keep working toward a deal that perhaps could emerge late next year. With that in mind, the U.S. president still plans to take up climate change along with a host of other pressing issues when he visits China for the first time next week. An agreement of some sort between China and the U.S., two of the world's largest economies and biggest carbon emitters, will be vital to the success of any larger treaty whenever it comes about. China's view on climate change is that it is a leader of the developing world. Its opinion is that the developed countries, the industrialized countries, have already had their chance in history to pollute, and they've contributed historically the most pollution, and therefore they should bear the burden of any kind of climate deal that requires massive expense and regulation and cost. What the Chinese in particular hope is that the International Climate Change Treaty would be based on their population, GDP, areas where China can kind of argue in its own favor. What it doesn't want is carbon emissions reductions that are targeted and unnegotiable. For Obama, the goal will be to show some progress on the climate change issue, which he's made a top priority for his presidency. But with only three days of talks, expectations for this trip, like those for the Copenhagen summit itself, are being watered down. Three days will hardly be enough time for Obama to really do much other than set the tone with Chinese relations for this first term of his presidency. Both sides will be eager to show that they're cooperative, that they get along despite differences. But a big major formal signing or something like that is probably not in order.